the boat axe destroyed. The final one thanks to its forced dunk into the lake and the hunger of the heroes knew the allied jewels. The heroes continued their journey along the lake. Upon entering a more narrow passage, the heroes discovered an old wharf midway and an old stone building carved out of the rock. With a few differences of opinion, the heroes moved beyond the locale and continued to the end of the watery passage and onto the shore of an overgrown garden of mushrooms and a fungus of all kinds. Appearing to have once been well tended, the fungi here seem to have not only been harmless, but nutritious and ripe for consumption. A few other sheds and disused buildings explored, and then approached to a bridge over a deep chasm the heroes made toward the other side, a cavern filled with enormous mushrooms and an ominously gigantic spider's web. When from behind them, a monstrously large creature lurking beneath the lake's surface lunged out to attack them from behind. A gruesome battle began with long grasping tentacles and deadly bites and a long barbed tongue that latched onto Tulak, reeled him close as the massive creature swallowed him down whole. So a long, long time ago, I used to work in a dinner theater. I've mentioned many times to all of you and probably in the Discord as well with our fans. And it was a kind of a ragtag crew putting on really fun comedy shows and playing live music. We served the tables in character and costume. It was a whole thing. It was a lot of work, not a lot of money. Wicked, wicked fun. Um, and... Uh, but because we were a bit of a ragtag crew with different strengths and weaknesses, uh, things would get messed up pretty quick sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's as simple as like you forgot a small bit of your line, but it still played off anyway. Or you hit the wrong note on your keyboard, which I was guilty of many, many times. But once in a while, something would go horribly wrong. And you had to figure out how to fix it if you could fix it at all. And I, I, one time, someone uh, in the crew who was so amazingly talented with music could not remember their scripted lines to save their life. We always gave them small roles with few lines because it was the only way to keep them in the show functionally. They were the most wonderful person in the world. But one time, they forgot a line so important and moved to the wrong line that they skipped and that, that this show, we would do three act shows and the first act being the longest, about an hour long so that they had time to cook the food. It was about an hour to the next one being about 30 minutes to the next one being about 15, 20 at most. They managed to skip about 30 to 40 minutes of the first act of the show because they said the wrong line and everyone else just went with it without thinking. And I had to spend one song not playing and pull out the script and flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between several uh, pages of dialogue. And the moment the lights went down after the song, I ran out on the stage and said to someone, when this line gets said, say this. When this line says gets said, say that. 
It's not in the right order. You have to do it. And the lights went up and we did it. And we managed to get through the act by keeping the plot intact in a rather jumbled way. And everyone buckled down and sorted it out. And when we got off stage, everyone said, oh my God, thank you. You're amazing. You saved the show. And I said, don't fucking talk to me. I'm so pissed off at all of you <laughs> because no one knew it went wrong except for me. We should all be better than this. And it was like this incredible moment in my, my seven or so years of working in that place where like, uh, I, I was just so angry, but so happy at the same time. And it was such an incredible, like dire moment. And it wasn't just me that fixed it at the end. It really wasn't. They all pulled out their bootstraps and fig realized where it had gone wrong, even though it was like at the last second in the weirdest moments improvised on stage. But it's hard to not think about that situation when thinking about the situation that's happening in the game right now. <laughs> and I just wanted to ask you all, is there any moments that stand out where like you saved the day or rather you and a few other people had to absolutely had to in a crucial moment get you know kind of band together and solve an issue that was like gonna just destroy something that you were working so hard on uh a couple notes first off toxic second off <laughs> second toxic? off what? <laughs> yelling at them don't talk to me i'm so mad at you oh it was, i uh, was i was so angry yeah, no i know i, I know I, it's, that's a reasonable yeah. response i'm just giving you yeah. shit we we, the, we hashed it out after, but at the time I was very angry. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we were fine. Um, <laughs> I think Best. that, like, the closest is always going to be, like, in food service. Just, like, we were... I was on a food truck, and it was at an anime convention. And it was literally just from 10.30 in the morning till 12 o'clock at night. It did not stop. Like, I it got to the this. point... Yeah. yeah, I did. I was cooking so many goddamn burger patties and my boss looked over at me like what the fuck is taking so long and i just look him dead in the eyes and put my finger down on the grill for like two seconds just holding it there and he's like oh and i was like Today shut the fuck bad. up i'm doing the most that i can do like this grill is literally cooked down to like 120 degrees right now there is mm. nothing i can do unless you want me to throw out raw patties which i fuck these kids i will like but, <laughs> Toxic. They smell bad anyways. <laughs> yeah, so toxic. toxic. <laughs> yeah, no, we do medium rare burger. Yeah. Like we normally sort uh sold our burgers medium, but mm -hmm. yeah, that like there were a number of times on the food truck that it was just like uh fucking refused new noise, like just -ne 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 -ne. like just if you watch the bear, the fucking song that plays every time like shit starts going, like there was just that, like just constantly. Because yeah. that like you're trying to serve like 200 fucking people out of a fucking food truck and like everything's yeah. just stacked on stacked on it's just a mess and we've it's all just... worked food service so we all know that yeah. one it's just the, that, yeah, that my, pressure yeah mine's very just... similar of being uh cooking pad ties at a festival one time and instead oh, of yeah. getting burners for a stove it was uh a grill that i had to take the grill part off of and get the pans as close as possible Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> <That's Yeah. terrible. laughs> it was a juggling act to make sure everything was staying hot enough to actually yeah. cook a fucking noodle Crazy. dish. Crazy. Scoot any major water disasters across the city that you uh you bit you got your your cohorts together to fix? Yeah, don't drink the water between now and July. <laughs> Damn, oh no. <laughs> well, I mean a big part of my job is fixing things that break. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you know anything about water, but it comes really fast when it's under pressure. So I've been, I've been in holes where you're working on a pipe and you go from being dry to being wet immediately and just soaked like the hole will fill in two seconds. And yeah. you know, that doesn't happen often because we generally are more set up and, but if things go wrong, they can go wrong pretty quickly. And so one of the things that we one thing we have to do is something called uh, doing it live. Mm. There's a little jargon for you from last week, hey, um, <laughs> and that's when there's a break in a pipe, but you have no control over it to turn it off. 
So essentially you're daylighting it. There's another jargon. And then pulling it, like basically cutting it so you can put a valve onto it on the fly as it's under full pressure, which could be up to 160 PSI, just ripping. So, you know, it's uh, it's pretty fun. Actually, I, yeah. those are the moments to get your adrenaline going and it's a good time. Is it a bit of a team effort to get it done or are you in there on your own doing it? It can be both. It can be yeah. all sorts of stuff. Honestly, I wasn't really paying attention to the fucking question because fuck you, Barn, and um, I'm still getting ready for this session right here, guys. Well, that's a segue <laughs> if I ever heard one. <laughs> we didn't get to no. James yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't really have anything, to be honest with you. A lot of those things, um, like really horrible things, I just kind of forget about them and leave them in the past where yeah. they belong. So sure. nothing jumps to mind. I one jumps to mind, but I'm not I'm not going to talk about it on the show. It's it, it was a near death experience of mine, and I'm, I just have no interest in discussing it. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can relate at the end of the day to at least the food service ones. Like they, there's so much pressure in the industry, and you know, services is, is the same, and it just uh, it's crazy how much things can mount up over w- one small thing can trickle down and make make a disaster, and that's sort of the point sure. of this, right? Um, and, and it is a team effort. Oftentimes it's a team effort to pull out of it and you don't always pull out of it perfectly. You never do. You never, you never, you never pull out of a tailspin back to no. where you were. Like nothing is ever yeah. great after. But the food thing, I learned very early on that it's just food. It's okay right. if it takes an extra five minutes as long as it's communicated to the guest. Yeah. Nobody's, it's not life or death. Like it's just mm-hmm. food. So. Even in my early 20s, I was pretty relaxed about it. As long as we were honest, communicated, and did our best to solve the problem, then it never really mattered, you know? Yeah. But I mean, that carries into other industries too. Like the the urgency of the food line, I'm really glad that I had it and took it into my other jobs. But mm. the communication and things like what I do every day is fix machines that are in life and death situations a lot of times. And mm. but having communication like things do go wrong we all make our best efforts to get everything done but communication between the people that you're working with is the one big Mm. thing that can make even the worst disasters kind of go a little bit right so yeah yeah it's amazing how uh the reception of communication proper communication can um you know even if it's just one directional communication this person said the right thing to this person and everyone picked up on it and they moved with it uh, which is what happened to me at that at that theater on that night and uh it was uh yeah it's a moment i'll never forget um and again it sort of reminds me of the situation we're in here now and there's no way uh, to come out of this i don't think um without uh in a perfect scenario um tulak is in the most real danger of his life ever i think um <laughs> there was a big one with that circle gone at one point but uh <laughs> back on the other subterranean lake but this one's different. He has swallowed whole. He has been hit for a crit to go to dying two right away. And uh, the swallowed whole rules also say that you automatically take the swallowed whole damage the moment it happens. Which means you do automatically go to dying three. Does the swallow have the manipulate trait? It does not. Damn. Just the attack trait. Is there a fortitude save or is it just an automatically take it? I don't remember. Uh, let me double check. A very good question, actually, because if it, if it happens to be a critical success, it could be zero damage, right? Um, I'm fishing here, Scott. I'm trying. I yeah. <laughs> uh, shoot, where was that? Uh, where was that information? The swallowed whole creature takes a listed amount of damage when first swallowed, and at the end of each of his turns, while it's swallowed. Period. Right, no fortitude save. So Trulock is in the belly of his creature at dying three. Yep. That is the end of the creature's turn. Tulak does have to go to dying five. We have a full round here to see what can be done. Nick. You're up. Nick is going to see some absolute shit go down and stand there paralyzed and delay. (laughs) That's a flavor paralyzed, not a self-imposed condition. Are you sure? Sure, get your finger away from the paralyzed button, Freeman. I can see it. Can... <laughs> okay. Uh, delay, lump. This is, this is communication at its finest. Lump saying, don't do it again. <laughs> Looking over at Ruff. Can, can you still make me big? Ruff? I can. Four, ices, 
four voices echo out. <laughs> and Lump will delay. Okay, rough. First two actions is enlarge on life. <laughs> oh, yes. They coordinated a little bit off air there, uh, listeners, but that's totally okay. <laughs> no, we didn't. He's a liar. <laughs> yeah, we had this all planned out from the beginning of this fight for dramatic. No, we didn't. Uh, Lump will go ahead enlarged. and step back into the order. Nope. Okay. Nope. Oh, nope. sorry. One you had one action left. left. Just kidding. <laughs> Ruff's last action will be to cast Guide the Timeline on Ruff as well. So your next uh, attack or skill check, you roll twice and take the higher. Sweet. Nice. All right. Now, Lump now Lump jumps back in the order. Okay. Yep. And we're going to go ahead and try to trip this creature with the fortune effect. Keep higher. Let's go. Uh, that is a natural 20 on the die for a 39. <laughs> no <Yeah>. way. <laughs> you have to be joking. <laughs> I am not. Uh, yeah, you trip the creature. Holy crap. And it takes take some uh, three points bludgeoning as it falls bludgeoning. down yeah, on the bank yeah. of this lake. <laughs> and then, three damage? Uh, okay. Yep. I am going to attempt to demoralize the creature. Uh, <laughs> intimidating. Uh, that is a 11 for a 26. Do you have a glare or no? Intimidating glare. It's all. It's visual. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a fail. It's 26, I'm afraid. All right. Last action is going to roll the flat check to try to cast heal on themselves. Okay. That is a 16 on the die. Where was that just a second ago? Um, <laughs> and this will be a one action heal on themselves. Okay. For 22 healing. 22. And okay. that is their turn. And the sound of the uh, creature hitting the ground will snap Nick into action. Uh, so, first action will be, well, two action intimidating strike. For a 25 to hit. Uh, that's a miss. Mm. Okay. Um, how deep's the water behind it? Uh, Big enough to conceal it. It held this thing and sealed it, yeah. So it's. I suppose, yeah. Okay, so he's just gonna go third action advantageous assault with a map minus five. Natural motherfucking 20. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Holy oh, shit. Geez, Turning point. Okay, Holy yep, shit. that's a crit. That's Come a crit. Come on, boys. 44 piercing. Plus 2d6. Oh. Plus 2d6. Plus, yes. Oh, from, from your For spell? An extra three. Okay. And with your uh, rooted, you are so you're immobilized. Your clumsy one. Oh no! Okay. And you're up. Yep. <laughs> How dare you? No, not you, the creature, obviously. Um, yeah, that's a turn. That is a turn. That is a turn. That was a. S- s- wait, was that two actions or is Avatar uh, assault two t- two actions? Intimidating strike. Oh, intimidating uh, strike. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so also, also no, fear. No, that was the miss on the first one. Oh, that was this. Was okay, a two okay. action miss and then Sorry. a one action slap. You get, the face getting lost in your success here. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Did the advantageous assault calculate everything? Because uh, sometimes yep. it hasn't been working. Okay. Yeah, there's a. I, I was forgetting to put a little slider on when I rolled damage dice, but I've been remembering it almost all the time. Now. Okay, so. Uh, next up is Tulak, who is unconscious and dying and needs to roll me a death saving throw. Flat check of uh, is it 13, 16, or 14? I rolled a 16. Okay. So that, inc- that reduces your dying value to two. Is that right? Yes. Okay. At the end of your turn, you automatically take damage to so put you back to three. Okay. And that, that's the end of your turn. Okay, and that brings us to this frog hemoth, who is going to flail its tentacles. Um, it's got two tentacles left to flail. Uh, oh, your skeletal giant's now gone because you can't sustain it. 
He's holding its corpse. <laughs> He's hold- he is holding its corpse. I'll give you that. That doesn't make a difference. Two tentacles left to hit two targets. Bam. Against Nick. 30 to hit. That will hit. Okay, you're going to take 30 bludgeoning. Uh, grab against your fortitude is 32. That's a crit. Uh, is it? What's your what's your fortitude? Oh, it's, oh, it's quite low. Um, okay, you are not just grabbed, but restrained. That's not good at all. Uh, and second attack is going to be uh, rough again for a 33 to hit. It's... 28 bludgeoning and 29 for the grab. Success. Okay, you are grabbed. Uh, And it is then going to spend an action to constrict. Uh, So I need all of you to roll a fortitude save, please. What about me? No, you're in the belly. You're fine. It's constricting with the tentacles. So any creature that is grabbed or restrained by it is going to take uh, a certain amount based on the fortitude save. Um, what'd you all get? Uh, natural one. Natural one for lump. Uh, 15. Nick, Hero point to 31 for rough. Okay. Uh, 31 is a meat to beat. Jesus. Uh, which makes the other two critical failures. Uh, so, Ruff, you're going to take half of 15, so seven. And the other two, Lump and Nick, are going to take 30 damage. Wait, 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 wait. We need to go back. I'm okay. sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Normally I no, wouldn't do okay. this, but I need you to roll a d4. Okay. Mirror image. A d4? Yep, mirror image. Oh, two. Two is a miss. Okay, so you're not grabbed and restrained and all that all that jazz. One of the images goes away. Wicked. So, yeah, don't even take that uh, half damage. That's the frog keepeth's turn. Rough, you're up. Well, you figure out your math. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> no, I just I just hit undo on the last two. Um, mm. Nice. Yeah, okay. Uh, obviously not, not ideal. Um, yeah, this thing is still prone and immobilized, so it's uh, but it's still whipping those tentacles out at alarming speeds. Um, but its AC is properly lowered. Can I target a specific place on it? Like, if I stepped up, could I target its belly, or is that just not it? Yeah, if you're looking at kind of releasing Tulak, you're looking at rupture rules, and rupture rules are basically you need to attack from the inside. You need to hit that sort of delicate lining from the inside and there's a minimum damage you have to do in one go and then it'll like regurgitate you but from the outside not gonna work okay first action will be to step as to not provoke next two actions will be a spell strike he's gonna charge this about as big as it gets with a shocking grasp hell yeah okay that's a natural 20 for a 37 to hit. Oh, we love no. this. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Boy. I'm, I'm fucking sweating over here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's hot this. Out. I've never uh, been more quiet in my life, I don't think. <laughs> uh, what do you got for damage? Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how to crit damage the spell strike. Okay, so it's going to be 38 slashing to start with. Okay, so 38 it, slashing, okay. And then it'll be 28 times 2 electric. Uh, it takes zero electric damage. Uh, however, however, you see this rubbery creature respond to the electricity, and it's like it's like the skin on it tightens up. And it's like, it's not even that its muscles retract. It's that like its whole outside pulls in tight at the response to the, the, the electricity. And it becomes slowed one. Oh, shit. Actually, I'll, I'll it's not in the rules, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be wicked generous here. I'm going to, because you crit, I'm going to make a slowed two. 
Well, that is wicked generous. Um, that is wicked generous. Yeah. That's wicked generous. Uh, I don't yeah. know if I want to die with an asterisk or live with an asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the good part is that since I crit, it takes one d four plus three persistent electricity. So ideally, it's just slowed until that falls off. Oh fuck! Right off. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, I, <laughs> oh my I, god. Yeah. I now, don't, that it begs weird, the question. Yeah. It is technically immune to electricity. Oh. Can no, it? no, sorry. If the target is wearing metal armor or is made of metal. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, yeah, so on a crit, double the initial amount of persistence. Okay. <laughs> I got some metal shit on me and I'm inside. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> There's an argument for you. That's like inside not armor. Not, not, <laughs> I'm not going for it, sorry. Um, yeah, but you see a very strong response to this, and you're going to see over the next little bit that it's to your benefit, and you might want to keep that in mind. Lump, what do you get? Oh my god. Clutch. <laughs> Lump is going to go ahead and cast a two-action heal at Nikaj, rolling my flat check. Okay. 11. You're doing good on those. Yeah, thankfully. Uh, that is 54 points of healing. <laughs> so powerful the heels. Yep, and uh, then uh, we'll. Well, it didn't stand up, and nope. is no, it's not bleeding. Damn it. Um, where'd rough go? I lost rough. <laughs> oh, <there you> are. <laughs> gallivanting around in there. Um, <laughs> gonna go ahead and roll. Go for a skip to my loo in the in the mushroom. Yeah, forest. roll another flat check to try to get this last heal up on myself. That's a six. One action oh, heal. God. Hey, it's enough. Uh, that is 22 points of healing. Nice. And uh, that is my turn. Now, quick question. You tripped this creature. Yeah. But you're holding a staff and a shield. My shield can trip. Your shield can trip. Yep. You're a legend. That's what we call a quality build, folks. <laughs> 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 What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I just saw Nick, one in the zoo up. one time. Yeah, Nick, <laughs> throw it in acrobatics to get out of here. 27. Uh, uh, okay. No. No. I'll tell you right now what you need uh, is a uh, 35 against the athletic CC. Okay. It's absurdly high. Um, well, he can't really do much else. So let's try it with a mat minus 5. 27. Nope. Uh, I don't even think I could get one. Um, nope. 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 Three actions. I'm not. Yeah. A natural 20 is a maybe at that point. All right. Two luck. Roll me a death save. It's a recovery check, Brandon. Whatever. Uh, so I just rolled a natural one. And I oh will use no. a heroic recovery. <laughs> nice. Oh, you have geez. to, or you're dead. Um, I want to throw out real quick too that you are suffocating in here, so you can't hold your breath. I don't remember the rules in that, but I know James, you looked it up recently, so I'm hoping you remember. Yeah, it's your con modifier plus a bunch of other stuff. That's if you're holding your breath. If he's unconscious, it doesn't. Yeah, he is, I think, dead because this is the second turn. It's five plus your con modifier is how many rounds you can hold your breath. You reduce but it by one But he's not holding his breath because he's unconscious. Two if you're when you run out of air, yeah. you fall unconscious and start suffocating. You can't recover from being unconscious. You must attempt a DC 20 fortitude save at the end of each of your turns. On a failure, you take 1d10 damage. On a critical failure, you die. On each check after the first, the DC increases by five and the damage by 1d10. These increases are cumulative. So in this particular instance, would it actually be better if he used the hero point to roll the d20 instead of the hero of recovery? Because we need a, a fortitude save, is what you're saying, Ken. Correct. I'll forgo the retroactive need for a, the previous round. And what's the DC, sorry? DC 20 fortitude save. If you're skipping the last round, it is still just DC 20. Um, no, 
I'll, I'll leave it up to you, Scoot. You gotta roll a DC. You gotta roll me a, a fortitude save first. I'll say that's before you rolled your your recovery check, and then you get to decide if you're gonna use your hero point on re-rolling that fortitude save or heroic recovering. This is why we play the game, baby. Okay, so I rolled a seventeen. Six on the die. Okay, so it's what a, are? It's a fail. So that means you would have gone from three to four. Because okay. you take some damage from not from uh, suffocating, and now you would have rolled the one. Yes. Which means you go to die to dead. Yeah. Now you're gonna heroic recovery. Yes, but what is the so if I pass this, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused on the mm -hmm. outcomes of either. Yeah, just just trust me on the order of operations here. Like you're you're gonna want to. Horror cover here because uh, okay. because it's going to because you are about to increase to dying five basically yeah right okay and that's then what my on your next was. turn you're going to fortitude save again and that is going to have a chance to to damage you which will increase your dying condition okay so you're heroic, heroic recovering heroic recovery baby well here's the thing is you're you're heroic recovery uh, right now but now it's the end of your turn which means you automatically have damage inside you're back to dying two because you were wounded one. Um, if you use a heroic recovery, don't you lose the... Oh, do you lose the wounded condition? You lose the dying condition, not the wounded condition. Uh, but you, you don't, don't gain the wounded condition or increase its value from dying condition as well. So if you already okay, had so wounded, yeah. you're still wounded. Got it. Got it. Copy that. Okay. So dying two? Dying two. Okay. Progheem is up. <laughs> This is insane. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this. Uh, this thing is got one action left because it is slowed to and it is going to use it to constrict those it has in its grasp, which is not Raphael. I need a fortitude from Nick and Lump, please. 13. Uh, 13. That is a cr critical failure and a 30 is a regular fail. Hold on. Let me check something. It is. Yeah, it's a regular fail. Uh, so, 50 damage to Nick. Oh, thanks for that heal, because uh, otherwise you'd be dead. 25 to lump. Rough. Is there a mechanic for cutting these tentacles off? There isn't, but I can... I, I would kind of go for maybe something similar to the cutting the tongue off, but the tongue is technically more vulnerable appendage is the idea, I think. Whereas this, the tentacles are the same material as like the rest of its body, which is very rubbery and resistant, which is why its AC is so high. That's the logic I'm going with anyway. Okay, he will uh, not do that then, and he'll start with his first action, uh, Horse Fang. So this ghostly rough just reaches out and bites this creature. Or seven force damage. Okay, very nice. So the reason we do that is because that recharges his uh, spell strike. Yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. Automatic damage, spell strike, some more. You going for some some more <laughs> electricity or what? <laughs> I think I'm going to do my other fourth level spell and go with chromatic ray. Oh. Because this could get weird. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the thirty-five to hit. That hits. Uh, so that's a yellow ray, which is another fifty electrical damage. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and eleven okay. slashing. Uh. Okay. Eleven slashing. Okay. No electricity, but slowed one. I'm trying. I'm. I'm really trying here. <laughs> Uh, Lump? Uh, Lump grabbed Clumsy, off guard, immobilized, drained one. Just trying to have a good time here. Oh, uh, wait, uh, Ruff, go ahead and roll that 2d6 damage. 2d6 damage for what? You did 10 points plus of damage for Bloodbreakers. Oh, excellent. That's seven. All right. Oh, by the way... I need to know: Does the clumsy from your critical strike dunk like last until for one round, or is it while I'm pinned? Let me double check. Yeah, one round. Okay, so the clumsy is gone. Or no, no, no. Sorry, uh, the immobilized is for one round. The clumsy is for as long as the immobilization lasts. So yeah, okay. Okay, 
It's no longer immobilized either. Okay, just want to make sure. It's still laying on the ground, so it's good. Gonna go ahead. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it all on the line. Flat check to two action heal Nick. That is a natural 20. Hooray. Nice. It is what it is. Uh, then we'll go ahead. Plus two. That's gonna be uh, 64 points of healing to Nick. Oh, awesome. Back to full. <laughs> nice. <laughs> my, my last action will be um, Lump will try yeah, to lump. Uh, lump is out of healing. Uh, lump is going to use Yep, there it is. Uh, oh, Lump will use even with the staff. Uh, it's a three part. Uh, I guess yeah. I, I'll I'll try. Um, a little bit. Uh, You've also I'm got the thinking. prayer beads. Um, yeah, that's a one level one heal. That's not worth it. Right. And the gloves. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to think. Damn it! I wish I. Uh, you know what? Because part of me is just like grab this thing and try to restrain it. You know what? I, I changed my mind. I will use my last action to aid Nikaj escaping with an athletics check. Uh, he's been doing acrobatics. I, it, it, it's still... I can use athletics to try to pry yep. the thing away as you wiggle free. So I'm just oh, using okay. athletics to help. Okay. Uh, and that will be all three of my actions. Okay. Uh, Nick. Nick, hearing some friendly athletics going on outside well his Hang in there, Nick. going up Hang and in down there. like crazy uh, uh, fuck 27 for the first uh, well it doesn't Yeah, I'm not going to bother and the eight. second was a natural one alright that's that <sighs> Tulak roll me a fortitude save DC is 20 still, Cam, or is it gone up? It's 25 now. 22. 25? Yep, 25. 1d10 point of damage. 22 is a failure. That puts you down to dying... Du? Sorry, dying... Three. Three. Dying three. Uh, roll me a flat check. Or, sorry, uh, yeah. 10. Recovery check, 10. That's dying four. And that's it. Fuck. And at the end of your turn, the contraction of the stomach of this creature squashes Tulak to permanent death. Brutal. Can we just go over why why that was three total? Like why he ascended that track three total times this turn. Three separate instances of damage. Suffocation, recovery check failed, damage by the stomach. Okay. Okay. Constricted and suffocating inside this creature. Tulak's mind drifts to simpler times. Lazy afternoon sunbeams on the stoop of a small tavern in Otari. Leaves float in the gentle breeze down the street. From inside, he hears the laugh of a family and the noise of happy patrons, as if willing himself to move towards the door. He reaches whatever form he's in towards the handle. As he tries to grab it, Darkness descends upon Tulak, a darkness known by no living creature. His soul begins to unbind itself from his mortal body. No light comes to his vision. Thoughts seem to appear from nowhere, a wondering, a feeling of curiosity. Where is the river of souls? Who will I meet? What god will be waiting for me? Where are my friends? But nothing comes. The only thing for him is an empty death. Oh, oh God. Bastard. Holy shit. <sighs> and this sense of I have got myself a meal 
this innate sense takes over the creature and it releases all of you. And it attempts to very quickly dive back into the water, triggering all of your uh, reactive strikes should you want to try and pin this creature and keep the fight going and possibly lose everything that is on Tulak. Including Mr. Bindleford. Including Duffy Bindleford. <laughs> That's a 25 to hit from Ruff. It's a natural 20 from Nick. Oh, nice. shit. Oh, no. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing it has to do, by the way, it is slowed. The first thing it has to do is stand. Is it can't, I, I'm not going to make it crawl. It is going to run. So it is going to stand, which triggers the AOOs. <laughs> okay. Uh, and now you have <laughs> fucking pinned the bastard. You got to be joking. <laughs> Roll me your crit damage. Oh, this is no way. This so is not good. Quick. 30. Okay, no longer grabbed. Remove your remove your conditions here. 30 damage. You have immobilized the bastard again and made it clumsy. It has one action left. <laughs> um and uh it can't move away. Oh, you bastards. It can't so move it's going yeah, it could, yeah, okay, it'll spend an action trying to do that. Uh, athletics against the DC 23. Ah, 32. So it's no longer immobilized, which means it's no longer clumsy. It is back to exactly where it needs to be, but it's out of actions rough. What do you got? Uh, real quick, the clumsy is from spear specialization, so it does still have the clumsy one. Oh, okay, good call. It actually comes from two sources, so thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, and because I crit... It doesn't stand up, correct? It's still down. Did you just say that? No, it does stand up. Oh, it does. I thought stand it. Up. I thought it didn't. No, yeah. we had a conversation with that, but I, I was wrong in the end. Uh, it's it interrupts manipulate actions. Standing oh. up is simply a move action. Yeah, that's yeah. what I get for listening to you. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ruff's first action is going to be dimensional assault, so he uh, vanishes and reappears fifteen feet uh, away. And strikes at the creature for a 19 to hit. That's a miss. Next two actions will be a spell strike. Because you've recharged it again. <laughs> with the dimensional assaults, yep. Oh, I love it. This is his last one. He's going to pair this with magnetic acceleration. So his blade okay. just begins to hum. <laughs> it's a 27 to hit. That's a miss. Hero point. 19 to hit. Fuck. That's right. Mm. Critical miss. Lump. Uh, Lump will kind of sigh at the over eager uh, Shuni popping off and then attempt to trip the creature. That's a 35 to trip. <laughs> yep, that works. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> falls down. It is now, it's like turned its back, scrambling in the mud almost now. <laughs> Just like, ah, ah, rah, get me away. <laughs> and then uh, with their last two actions, we'll cast fear. Just screaming oh, yeah. okay. at this creature. Anger. I assume that's there. a will save. That is a will save. Okay, got a pretty good chance of this. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, 35. Uh, that is a critical success. You are unaffected. Mm -hmm. Nick. Mm. Can you get another crit in? <laughs> I hope so. He's going to try another intimidating strike. 39 to hit. Oh my god, it's a fucking crit. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> so that's 36 no, piercing. You're oh. immobilized, clumsy, and frightened too. <laughs> Hey, oh Nick, God. go ahead and roll those 2d6 for me real quick. Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead and roll those 2d6. Oh, Another what? 10. Where's that, where is that coming from? The, the blood spray blood curse. Spray is it still on me? How does that work? It's a minute. <laughs> oh, so is it uh, the first time someone what, crits? Yeah, or? No, it's the first time around. So, Oh, that you get I hit? guess it could okay. have been long. I guess it could have been rough because uh, 
he did hit, but I, I, yeah, yeah, I've just okay. been re- keeping it so. as Nick because I'm, um, yeah. Okay, because <laughs> it's appropriate. <laughs> uh, okay, another 10. Holy yeah. crap. And okay. And then just assault for his for third action. Oh, yeah. 31. 31 hits. Fucking die. 18 piercing. Okay, 18 piercing. It is on the ground, scrambling for its life as best as it can. I have to remove Tulak from the initiative order. Yikes. <laughs> wow. Yikes. <laughs> Too soon. Oh, no. Said the loud part quiet, the quiet part loud, did you? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Scott. Oh. Um, okay. Holy shit. It is this creature's turn, and it can do f- almost fuck all here. Uh, it's going, and it pretty much knows it can escape your mobilization, so it's going to attempt that first. 39. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's it's going to stand up. Take your air reactive strikes. 22. Mm-hmm. Miss. Natural 20 for a 37. <gasps> Come on. Oh, no. Foundry finally doesn't hate us. 32 <laughs> slashing. Okay. 32 slashing. Uh, that's two actions. Break free. Stand up. And jump into the water. See you Uh, later, everything made by a patron. (laughs) It leaps into the water at a pretty big speed. With this massive splash. I'm not going to end it there, though. It's just dove into the water, but it's just going away from you. I'm going to give you one last hurrah here. Uh, if you can do it from a distance. Uh, oh, let, me, let me move him back to make sure I get this uh, distance right. It's going to go 30 feet away from you because that's its swim speed. But I'm not going to make it go down out of the water completely. Rough. Uh, in honor of Tulak, he's gonna do telenetic, telenetic projectile. <laughs> uh, so he's gonna stride five feet. Yes. Oh my God. The twenty-six to hit. It's a miss. Lump. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and, in honor of Tulok, cast Pernicious Poltergeist. <laughs> what? It's a, it's a, <laughs> I create an echo of a powerful poltergeist, temporarily anchoring it to an area to terrorize and harm any opponents foolish enough to remain in the area. Because the poltergeist is a manifestation and not truly present, it can't be attacked or hurt. It remains invisible until otherwise stated. When you cast the spell, the first time you sustain it on su- sub- ah, subsequent rounds, the poltergeist creates your choice of one of the following effects. Deathly Assault, Frighten, or Telenetic Storm. There, I got it. <laughs> and so I am going to place this 10-foot burst over the creature, and we watch as Tulok's spirit comes forth from the creature and oh. just goes into a tantrum just pulling rocks down from the ceiling debris and quasi real objects just crumbling into it and I need a basic reflex save uh basic reflex this is my lowest 22 that is a failure you will take 20 points of force damage that ain't bad Describe your kill and how Tulak's body (laughs) ejects from its mouth. (laughs) Oh, God. So, yeah, just Tulak, just anger and vengeance, just being pulled back from the empty death for this brief moment to get revenge, just pulling rocks from the ceiling, a stalagmite made of force just crushing through its head (laughs) as it just breaks its back and just (laughs) out comes Tulak. Oh, 
and, and lump this. Sus- Go ahead. Sorry, Go ahead. I just want to say lump will sustain the spell to just have a moment to kind of say goodbye. If you're going to allow this flavor, because I don't know. I don't yeah. Know, oh, hell spell, yeah. But, okay. uh, I mean, there is this like intense wave of divine energy that springs out from you to form this creature and like this, like this, this, if, this fake image of, of Tulak, uh, a certainly inspired image of him and the body comes flying out like let's just say it lands onto the ruined dock so we don't have to make you go swimming after it and uh, and this like creature just like sinks into the water after you do this um, there's just like this slow bubbling to the surface as it does and um yeah, there's this floating apparition that you've conjured that looks a lot like Tulak. Does that mean you're going to let him play Tulak with a ghost archetype? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. That's up to Scott. <laughs> That's up to Scott. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's, but there's this very obvious um, limp body on the dock nearby that contrasts this, like, what seems something like obviously unliving, but is the most living thing uh, of Tulak left. And Lump will sustain the spell where it is and slowly move over to the body and gently close Tulak's eyes and just whisper. May your last breath stoke the ember in our hearts and push us ever onward. You have guided us this far, friend. Take your rest. It is well earned. Trust me. We will finish this. Nick's just looking helplessly around. We should depart this place for a time. We should. We should tend to this. We should bring him. Yes. Back to Atari, where he belongs. Lump will gingerly scoop up Tulak. Just looking up at the poltergeist looking down at Tulak and just start to cry really hard. Ruff holding back tears the best he can will kind of get the boat ready so that you know giant lump and Tulak can get into it. And uh, I, th- I, I think we go back to Atari. I mean, I know that's not our ambition, but I don't. Yeah. Unless we're going to feed the body dog rail. I, I don't see what else we do with it. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, we're still drained and stuff anyways. So even if we weren't doing the funeral rites, we'd need to take some rest time. But yeah, probably want to wanna let the town know. Yeah. I feel like we should vie for this to be a holiday or something. You know, yeah, two yeah, yeah. locks day. Two locks giving. God damn. I didn't think it would be today. I'll say that. I we I tried. I tried so hard. <laughs> we all tried oh, real we came fucking hard. So close. Uh, like actually, I think, you know. Um This one hurts. This one hurts more yeah. than, than this you one's know, some all. Brutal. This yeah. one hurts more than physic. <clears throat> Not by much, but this one. Well, yeah. It's funny. I I feel less sick about this one than the others. Well, <laughs> well we know we yeah. 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 <laughs> finally got what you wanted, you <laughs> sick freak. I still like. I feel like maybe I'm just in denial of this one. I don't know. <laughs> the other ones, I was so nervous on the lead up, and this one, I was like, I kind of knew this was going to happen to almost anybody, and I rolled a d4 to determine who got that tongue, and it was going to be either Duncan or Scott, and it was Scott. So It's just tough because it was kind of our hubris that brought us down here. Like, 
there was definitely a part of me that was like, we should rest right now. But I'm like, oh, no, let's just carry on. Like, And then we got to the first door and I'm like, we should probably get out here because then we have like, I don't know what's down there. We have a way to go. And then we got and then we're like, you know what? Let's just keep going farther. I'm, I see mushroomy things at the end. I'm interested to know what it is. So I'm like super stoked to go down there. And then I still thought that the creature was going to clearly come from the red mushroom side from the east. And then we still had a way out. And um, you know what? I never should have casted that creature because then I would have had a. I would have built Dimension Door, whatever the fuck it's called now. Can't think. Yeah. Like if we start running, what's what's to the east of us? Probably a big scary spider monster. Well, that's the other thing. The <laughs> moment I heard all of you start discussing about kiting the creature, I was like, that's a that's a bold move. Like I know what's I know what's over there, but to assume that there isn't something over there, it's kind of crazy. Uh, you it's know? not assuming there isn't something over there. The strategy mm. is is getting away from this creature that that Ooh. what's over there can't be our first priority when one of our party members is down right like we need to there is something. the possibility too of like this this creature is quite bestial and obviously quite hungry maybe it ends up in a little bit of action with the other uh, something else that's over there right oh yeah that too i just want to say that scott said we keep moving south and that was a me statement for scott <laughs> i wanted to go through the door <laughs> two luck would be alive right now don't you put words in Lump's mouth. How dare you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mouths. No, sorry, mouths. This was a... Eh. <laughs> My bad. You wanted to go through the door? I thought you made the case to go south. No, fuck no. I wanted to move. Made the case to, like, d- keep our backs protected, yeah. Yep. Lump, Lump le- never wants anything behind their back that they can't count as a oh, wall or frame. I definitely misinterpreted what you said. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> And now we know how it, communication can both succeed and fail a group of people. <laughs> yep. Uh, fuck. I mean, right. we can... Right, yeah. Can we activate the teleportation circles without Tulak? Yes. That you've, awoke, you've awoken them through Tulak, so they are usable by pretty much anybody at this point. I mean, I guess, I guess maybe tec- technically you need a little bit of Nah, magic to make it happen, but uh, I'm kinda Ruff's probably got enough. I just, I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. You are going to make your way back to Otari via the same route with um, the route you just came with uh, Tulak's body in tow? I, I don't know another uh, way well, to Well, I think Tulak's body is going to be in the boat. Um, yeah. But I, I just think mean you're going Ruff back is going to try water, and right? tow the the corpse of the frog hemoth with with like a blade stuck into it or something to try and feed to the chules. Okay, <laughs> I dig that. That's fun. Gotta make friends while you can. <laughs> just get it, get it, drag it along, drawling it along. Um, yeah, we'll just stick a knife in it and just hold it at the back sure. of the boat. Uh, it's perhaps a bit slow going, but there is an odd sort of maybe unsettling peacefulness to your journey back along the water and especially past that door you opted not to enter and um you make your way back to the elevator uh you leave the body of the frog he at the dock and the jewels yep thank you i uh, guess <laughs> no i'm not gonna make them come out of the water uh, High fives you, and air really kicks. <laughs> uh, you take the elevator back up to the prison level. Teleportation circle back to level two. Servants' quarters. And the long, slowed ver- uh, journey back with uh, another dead companion. Wow. This will be exactly... It's be exactly the right time to make uh, Scott even more angry and say, you all get a hero point? Woo. And you can level up. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Worth it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it it absolutely was not. It was absolutely not worth it. <laughs> there, goes the, there goes the webcam. <laughs> well, a level five spell would have been fucking nice. Um. <laughs> uh, I just want you to bear in mind that you're all now going to be a level nine, but 
you still technically shouldn't be in the standard adventure with the four players at this point. Uh, so you should have been eight for that. Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a debatable uh, <laughs> scenario. But uh, <laughs> can, can we know the CR of that creature? It is actually a CR 13 creature, but it has the weak template. So it's a so CR, it's CR 12. 12. That's, uh, that is insane. Four it's an extreme encounter. A very extreme encounter, yeah. It's insane. <laughs> like, normally yeah. plus three is already, oh, I'm dropping a body in this. The fact yeah. that we didn't fucking all absolutely crash out is fucking ridiculous. Like, it's crazy. If Freeman Those hadn't crits came through. made... And I, ha- I had the thought to myself... Slowed. If the creature dies in its stomach, I'm going to make it run because it just wants a meal. And then I, pretty much immediately after I thought that, I saw Cam put in the chat, this is a TPK if Freeman doesn't decide to like make this thing run with its meal. <laughs> I was like, oh, on the same page, I see. Yes. <laughs> um, not, I don't, as far as I know, that's not in the counter for his motivation, uh, in, in the AP for his motivations, but it made sense to me. Uh, it is, has to weaken template because it is, a, in fact, a bog rotted frog hemoth. So it's like the, the poor condition of the waters has affected it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's bonkers. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Ninth level really would have helped. I become a master in my spells. <laughs> So let's go back to town. Let's let's we have some time Expert left in the episode, obviously. Uh, let's I really want you guys to dig into what you're going to do in town, how this is um, affecting all of you, where you want to go. And, uh, and I want to go over the, the three levels um, that we have for the <laughs> remaining party. Um. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> So, uh, first thing we do is is bring two locks body to Vandy. I don't think there's going to be any debate in that. Yeah, what's it like when you come into town? What route do you take? You know, let's oh, let's talk about what time of day it is too. It's been a bit, a bit since I moved this calendar forward. I feel like, yeah, it's going to be. It looks to me like it's going to be about um, really early morning, like three a.m. Kind of. So most of the town will be asleep. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think they essentially just rough wants to parade in, you know, take take the most well-traveled road so people can see, you know, this isn't like Kruka where where something's gone wrong that we might be able to possibly fix. Ruff truly believes this is one of the greatest men he's ever known. And he wants Otari to mourn. He wants Otari to hurt for this loss. Anyone opposed? Anyone assisting in some way? No, I'm with it. I like it. How are you carrying the body in? Uh, just in my arms. Uh, I think it's called, uh, not Fireman's Carry, what's the other one? Just dragging him by Modified his foot. Modified Fireman's no. Carry? It's just cradling? like cradling, yeah, cradling. There Gently it is. cradling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Head and arm limp. Yeah. And uh, just steel boots clanking on cobblestones as almost like a slow dirge walk. Nick? Uh, Nick's following behind Lump. Same. Just kind of head down. Um, contemplating what's going on. Is Ruff sort of like, I don't know how you insist upon this parade in, but um, as you get to the start of the town, the entrance, you see a couple of uh, pike or spear wielding late night Otari guards. And they are a bit alert as you approach and the closer you get they start to recognize oh that's oh that's Raphael the mysterious return of this local now turned hero there's Lump the one that we all just just learned of the the new identity and the rumors have been spreading there's that new kobold uh, who popped up amongst the other stone scales and there's the limp body of the single longest standing hero of Otari. 
and their defensive posture quickly turns to shock. Uh, they just don't know how to respond. They almost go limp. Uh, they put their weapons, they aim their weapons down, as it were, and and are slack-jawed at the sight. This massive lumpen creature carrying the greatest hope Otari has had in the last month or so. Ruff is walking tall for the first time. He's standing as tall as he possibly can. He's not trying to hide his identity. And his faith tattoo around his eye is just glowing in a bright phrasmic blue. And when he sees the guards start to slack, he immediately like hits them in the leg so they straighten up. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, and the uh, they do. They just they snap to attention and they put their spears back on their ends on the ground and they they sort of straighten up. And as you cross the bridge into town and head down the main road, you hit the first fork and you see a, a patrolling guard walking along and holding a torch and say, Whoa, who goes there? And they wa- you, you stop in your tracks and it walks up to you and uh, he sees the scene and is um, as, uh, as shocked as the others but what you didn't maybe you didn't notice was that one of the the guards from the entrance had started to follow you and calls out another's fallen let them pass and hearing from his fellow guard he shakes it off and tries to regain his composure and nods to you all for you to continue you walk down the main strip that takes you past Odd Stories, the front, entr- front entrance to Odd Stories, and, and the Farmer's Guild with Hala High Stepper. And you, as you go, meet another guard in another, and the exchanges become more and more similar, or sorry, less and less similar as. As you approach, each guard realizes this is turning quickly turning into a procession, despite it being the middle of the night. And there's this purposeful knock on the ground from those who carry a spear with each step. Knock. 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 And it starts to pull other guards out from their patrols and towards you. And you start to hear smack, smack with swords on shields and this slow slow procession sort of uh begins to stir some of the animals animals at the farmer's guild which gets some of those guild members uh moving around and out of bed you hear some lights turning on both behind and beside and ahead of you uh in various buildings by the time you reach the otari market uh there is a reasonable retinue of people behind you and when you get to the Crook's Nook, which is usually kind of an all-hours kind of place, if not always busy late at night, you see people pouring out at the, the now raucous, cacophonous sound of the procession behind you. And before you get across the bridge by the Crook's Nook, there is a gathering of kobolds that have come down from the ruins of the Thirsty Alpaca, and having heard you from the other side of the other bridge. You see a uh, pajama Lazda and Brelda Vanker Vale coming out of the rowdy rockfish as you pass by. Continuing along, you might even catch a glimpse of Rab Turtle and or his butler giving a bit of a sneer at the noise in the middle of the night, but still paying attention. And by the time you arrive at the Dawnflower Library, Vandy Bannerdash in her best um, waking up robes is standing out of the entrance with a, more than a few acolytes and you have like a basically a massive parade of people behind you at 3 a.m. in the morning <laughs> at Otari and she simply nods 
and beckons you to follow her. You enter the Dawnflower Library. Ruff will stop, turn to the procession, and as loud as his little voice will allow or go, maybe aided with the power of the Shika. I was going to say, maybe you try to go as loud as you can, but you get multiple voices that suddenly shoot out at once. Death is not the end. Not for Tulak of Otari. Tulak of the Rose Guard. We shall not fall. And then he'll turn and go into the library. And there is this, like, stark, brutal silence amongst everyone, because that seems like the final stroke of realizing, in a very short amount of time, really realizing that despite your inspirational speech, Tulak is dead. And you see a few tears welling up in more than a few eyes, and the guards are just start banging. They just start banging on their shields and banging on the stone, the cobblestone roads. And citizens have like uh, joined in. They they grabbed pots and pans when they were following and joined the beat. And now it was just clatter, 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 clatter. And the entire town of Otari wakes up over the next little while. The rumors start to spread, and it is a very, very sleepless night for everyone. And the body is laid down with physic in the same room that Krukka sways back and forth in, put to a magical, peaceful rest until such a time is appropriate. to lay them in the Otari graveyard. We are the Rose Guard now, fellows. This is a legacy I am not sure we can live up to. But we try. I don't think we have a choice. We, We do have a choice. We can quit here. We can leave. No. No, I'm I'm not saying that I want to. I'm saying that we choose this for ourselves. Till the last breath. It has been a long night, friends. If you will excuse me, I would take my leave. And maybe looking as old as he's ever looked, Ruff exits the library. And does his best to blend into whatever crowd is left and just hood up quietly and carefully, going to the only place he knows that will offer him a touch of reprieve. Arthur's old house. Nick, hearing the din of the crowd, just walks outside and joins them, starts banging his spear along and just kind of surveying the people that he's now feels that he's got some, you know, responsibility over. He just kind of does that for until something happens, until uh, he comes back to his senses, but spends all time just seeing the people that are his cherish. It's not long before the kobolds kind of find you in that crowd, though. They don't make a too big a point about it, but they do kind of surround you and um, gather uh, with you because they want to make their place in this town, and so far it's been okay, but they are they are leaning on you as their representative. The adamant here as the representative, but you as the, the sort of hero and clinch pin uh, that is out there doing the dirty work 
and they kind of follow your lead. They join in this and that, and they just linger nearby and and chat with the townsfolk, and some of them even just pretend to sort of just enjoy the local rumor mongering. Uh, when it comes down to that, when it comes to people being a little settled and wanting to kind of spread information, and um, and the adamant eventually finds you and is kind of like observing you, this granite scaled kobold. Yeah, Nick sees him and sidles up. So, I guess I'm the hero now. You sort of need to be. I know I named you ambassador to our kind without your express permission. However, I had a feeling you would be up to the task. I also knew you'd be in over your head. All of them are. All of us are. The situation is so much worse than we are regularly and willing to admit. You're right on that count. I, uh, I am over in over my head, and I am capable of a task. It's. I appreciate the endorsement. But I worry of the task that we have ahead. Just remember that our endorsement is not a one-way street. We need you as much as you need us. The people here don't understand our kind. They're suspicious of us, and with good reason. At the end of all days... We must work together, if separately. Remember that when you are in over your head, there are those of us who are beneath you, holding you up. And there are companions of yours, these other heroes, that stand above your head, protecting you from what may rain down. I understand that. Thank you, Edmund. I only wish to bring me... To, to bring us... To bring us all peace. And a little bit of glory wouldn't hurt, would it? He gives a wry smile. Returned with a cheeky grin. <laughs> a wink and a tickle. And... Lump... What have you been doing when the crowd starts to starts to sort of like disseminate? Lump intends to stand silent vigil over Tulak's body for the night, as is tradition in Last Wall. And as you stand vigil, two people enter the room a little while later to join you. Other than the tasked acolytes to tend to the body. Tamily Tandervale, dressed in her finest material regalia. Material regalia? Uh, military regalia. <laughs> you got there, bud. Keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is wrong. Technically, <laughs> it was technically right, yeah. <laughs> Just took the drama right out of it. Uh, and the, uh, the, the specific... Uh, colors of the gray corsairs, which elude me right now, but maybe James remembers. Blue and gray, uh, gray, blue and gray. And thank yellow. you. Uh, uh, yellow? So, uh, ribboned around her peg leg, and uh, Aloria Galantine, and they both just sit down with you, Lump, and take vigil, and that's where we're gonna call it. I'm actually crying a little bit right now. Yeah. 
Oh, I got weepy earlier. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. This is right a here, decent I crack two of my voice. <laughs> That's why we play the game, guys. This is why we play the yeah. game. <laughs> and fuck you, Barn. You finally got what you wanted, you sicko. Oh, I can't wait to tell Michael. <laughs> oh, you are going to get fucking reamed over this one, but yeah. oh, it's going to be brutal. <laughs> Stemming the Tide is an actual play podcast of the Adventure Path Abomination Vaults and is produced by the Uncharted North Network. Stemming the Tide uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Stemming the Tide is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Music is composed by Will Savino and artwork by Greyhood. Stemming the Tide is recorded remotely using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you wish to connect with us or support this project and projects to come, we can be found at unchartednorth.ca, patreon.com slash unchartednorth, and on all major social media platforms. Links to all credits can be found in the episode description and our website. Thanks for tuning in.